Good morning. My name is John Morrison and on behalf of our Rector, the Reverend Joe Richards, I welcome you to this service of morning prayer for the benefits of uh, Canterbury, St Dunstan, St Mildred and St Peter for Wednesday the 18th of November 2020. Um, the uh, Church of England uh, in its cycle has asked us to remember uh, Elizabeth of Hungary, Princess of Turinga and uh, a philanthropist and her date is given as 12 31. A few words uh, from Exciting Holiness about Elizabeth of Hungary. Elizabeth was born in 1207, the daughter of the King of Hungary, and was given in marriage to Louis IV, Landgrave of Turinga, with whom she had three children. Theirs was a happy marriage. Uh, but her husband of four years died of the plague. Elizabeth was driven from court and she settled in Marburg, where her confessor was Conrad of Marburg, whose domineering and almost sadistic ways exemplified one who had himself uh, been uh, a successful inquisitor of heretics. She suffered mental and physical abuse from him in the name of religious austerity but bore it all humbly. Elizabeth became a member of the Franciscan Third Order, which reflected her life of caring for the poor, even cooking and cleaning for them. Due to the severe regime under which she lived, her weakened body gave way under the pressure, and she died on this day, just 24 years old, in the year 1231. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your people. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, May the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day, and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. A song of trust in God. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been in my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God. With the voice of praising and thanksgiving among those who kept the holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will give him thanks who is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, see our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The
refrain for Psalm 56 and 57, both starting at the first verses, In God I trust and will not fear. In God I trust and will not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for they trample over me. All day long they assault and oppress me. My adversaries trample over me all day long. Many are they that make proud war against me. In the day of my fear, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear, for what can flesh do to me? In God I trust and will not fear. All day long they wound me with words. Their every thought is to do me evil. They stir up trouble, they lie in wait. Marking my steps, they seek my life. Shall they escape for all their wickedness? In anger, O oh God, cast the peoples down. I have counted up my groaning. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not written in your book? In God I trust and will not fear. Then shall my enemies turn back on the day when I call upon you. This I know, for God is on my side. In God whose words I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not fear, what can flesh do to me? To you, O God, will I fulfil my vows. To you will I bring my offerings of thanks. For you will deliver my soul from death and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. In God I trust and will not fear. Faithful God, your deliverance is nearer than we know. Free us from fear and help us to find courage in your word. Jesus Christ our Lord. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call on the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample on me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet. My soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me, and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken with you. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and your glory over all the earth. Tender God, gentle protector in times of trouble, pierce the gloom of despair and give us, with all your people, the song of freedom and the shout of praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Daniel, chapter 9, starting at the first verse. In the first year of Darius, son of of Harazurus, by birth a Mede, who became king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, perceived in the books of the number of years 
that according to the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord to the prophet Jeremiah must be fulfilled for the devastation of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. Then I turned to the Lord God to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth with ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, Our Lord, great and awesome God, keep in covenant and steadfast love with those who love you and keep your commandments. We have sinned and done wrong, acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets who spoke in the name, in your name to our kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Righteousness is on your side, O Lord, but open shame, as at this day falls on us, the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away, in all the lands to which you have driven them because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Open shame, O Lord, falls on us, our kings, our officials, and our ancestors, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by following his laws which he set before us by his servants and prophets. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, refusing to obey your voice. So the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out upon us because we have sinned against you. He has confirmed his words, which he spoke against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us a calamity calamity so great that what has been done against Jerusalem has never before been done under the whole heaven. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come upon us. We did not entreat the favour of the Lord our God, turning from our iniquities and reflecting on his fidelity. So the Lord kept watch over this calamity until he brought it upon us. Indeed, the Lord our God is right in all he has done, for we have disobeyed his voice. And now, O Lord our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made your name renowned, even to this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, in view of all your righteous acts, let your anger and wrath, we pray, turn away from your city Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of our sins and iniquities of our ancestors. Jerusalem and your people have become a disgrace among all our neighbours. Now therefore, O, o our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication. And for your own sake, Lord, let your face shine upon your desolated sanctuary. Incline your ear, O oh my God, and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolation and the city that bears your name. We do not present our supplication before you on the ground of our righteousness, but on the ground of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act and do not delay. For your own sake, O oh my God, because your city and your people bear your name. A Song of the New Creation I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King, Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people 
whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Our second reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 11, starting at the 15th verse. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign for ever and ever. Then the twenty-four elders who sit on their throne before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, singing, We give you thanks, Lord God Almighty, who are and who were, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath has come, and the time for judging the dead, for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and all who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple, and there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. They were faithful unto death, and God has given them the crown of life. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of God, the dawn shall from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. They were faithful unto death, and God has given them the crown of life. Gracious Lord, as we are about this day and its tasks, we ask that you remain alongside us. We pray that all our doings may be gracious in thy sight, that you comfort us, 
and that you help us to bring your inestimable love to all those whom we meet today. Whether we meet physically or by using the 21st century means of contact, we ask that your spirit is contacted across the waves that we enjoy this day. We pray for this broken world and its many needs and we ask your graciousness in helping those who cannot help themselves. And we pray that the church offers succor to all those who need that help. And that however small we contribute to the church's commitment to the poor and downtrodden. And we're asked today to pray for all saints on earth that they may be permitted to live as citizens of heaven. And again we ask that all people may hear and believe in the word of God. We know that there are many of our acquaintance who fear the onset of the winter months, the short days, the worry about whether to heat the house, the constant concern about being able to eat properly. Be with them and help them to find some assistance both from church sources and from charitable sources in the secular world and we ask you to come alongside all sovereigns and political leaders that they may imitate the righteous rule of Jesus Christ And especially today, we ask you to be with all those who grieve, who grieve for the loss of somebody, not only from the pandemic, but also for other illnesses. And we pray for those who wait with the dying, that they may be strengthened. And given your power of love in those closing hours. Lord God, who taught Elizabeth of Hungary to recognize and reverence Christ in the poor of this world by her example, strengthen us to love and serve the afflicted and the needy, and so to honor your son, the servant king who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen may christ who has opened the kingdom of heaven 
bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with me this morning. Uh, I will be with you again uh, should you be available at 6 o'clock for a service of night prayer compline. And the rector will be back with you tomorrow morning, uh, Thursday at 9 o'clock. Have a lovely day. The sun is shining. And I look forward to seeing you if you can make it at 6. Bye for now.